going to talk about our heart uh, this morning. And that's the title of the message uh, that I have for you today, A Sensitive Heart Toward God. Whenever the Bible uses the term heart, I can't think of one instance in the Bible, maybe there's one there, where it's referring to the organ in our body that pumps blood. When the Bible refers to the heart, it's referring to the spirit, to the inner man, that part of us that communes with God. And one of the most precious things, one of the most precious commodities that we can have, and think about this, is to have a sensitive and a tender heart toward God. Christianity is a faith of the heart. It's not ultimately about rules and regulations. It is about our heart toward God. The Bible presents two extremes. It presents the extreme of the hard heart. And in Ezekiel, we'll look at this uh, verse in a moment, in Ezekiel 36, that's represented by a stony heart. And, and uh, you know, we'll see that, maybe you're familiar with that scripture, a stony heart, a hard heart. And on the other side of the equation, there's the tender heart. And in that verse in Ezekiel 36, it, it's talking about, uh, it, it calls it a heart of flesh. Not talking again about the, the physical organ in our body that pumps blood, but just a soft, pliable, kind of clay-in-the-potter's-hand sort of heart. And I think that there's a myriad of degrees in between the hard and stony heart and the very tender heart toward God. And, uh, and there's a whole gamut of, of you know, degrees of that. So the question this morning, how do we acquire and maintain a sensitive heart before God? Maturity. Maturity in Christ is not about letting calluses grow around the heart, obviously. So what do we need to do? i give you a few things, just a few thoughts from Scripture, I think, that will help us. And the first one is taken from Hebrews chapter 3, verse 15. And this is just the title, if you will, or the heading. The point is, heeding the voice of God. Heeding the voice of God leads to a, to a tender heart. That Scripture says, today, today, if you will hear His voice, do not harden your hearts, as in the rebellion. One of the biggest determining factors of whether or not we have a tender heart or a hard heart is how we respond to the leading and the prompting of the Holy Spirit. If we respond to that leading of the Holy Spirit, our hearts become soft and more sensitive and more able to sense and to hear and to feel and to, to, to follow His leading. On the contrary, obviously, if we don't, a layer of callousness builds up around our heart. So how do we respond? How do we respond when we feel that God is prompting us? The implication of this verse is our hearts will become hard if we don't respond to God. And he said it starts with not wanting to hear. And it progresses to not being able to hear. Hear what I just said. Sometimes we don't want to hear. And if we stay in that place of not wanting to hear, we will come to a place eventually where we're not able to hear. And what did Jesus say? He said, they have ears, but, what? but they can't hear because they don't want to. And the longer we stay in that place, all of a sudden, it's not a matter of whether we want to or not. It's a matter of spiritually, we can't hear anymore. It says, now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times, some will depart from the faith giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. But if, if the burn is that bad, you could stick a pin right in the skin there and you wouldn't feel it because the, the nerves are damaged. And that's the idea I think that the, the writer is trying to portray, the Holy Spirit is trying to portray, that person, a person can come to a place where their conscience or their heart is seared as with a hot iron and they can't feel anymore. They can't feel or sense what God is again, saying to them, leading them, prompting them to do. Someone said once, if you get to that place where you don't feel the leading and the, the, the promptings of the Holy Spirit, retrace your steps. You might need, we might need to go back and find that place. Maybe it was that time where 
you know, God said turn right and we turned left or something. And, and we have to go back and retrace our steps and get back and get that right. All sin. This is the next point. This is kind of just taking it more generally. I was talking very specifically about not heeding the voice of God. But all sin can lead, needless to say, to a hardness of heart. It says this in, it's also in Hebrews 3, a couple verses up from the earlier verse in verse 15. This is in verse 13. But exhort one another daily. While it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. I think it's pretty obvious that sin causes a hard heart. When we live in habitual sin and rebellion against God. Notice the word deceitfulness. That's probably the key word there. The deceitfulness of it is oftentimes we don't even know it's happening. Because it happens subtly. But what must we do? There's a verse in Hosea, the Old Testament prophet Hosea, verse 10, excuse me, chapter 10, verse 12. You know, we have a responsibility. This is not just about God fix it. We have some things that the, Spirit, that the Holy Spirit has shown us in His Word that we need to do. And I love this verse. It says, sow for yourselves righteousness. That's the first thing. Reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till He comes and rains righteousness on. Break up the fallow ground. That's the idea that I'm trying to portray. What does it say we need to do? We need to sow righteousness. Planting seeds of righteousness in our hearts. Putting God's word in our heart. Loving the things that he loves. Doing, even though I said doing isn't the ultimate end all. It is indicative and we do need to obviously do righteous things. That's part of sowing righteousness. And then it says we have to reap in mercy. Because it's not just about doing the right things. It's about a heart attitude. And, and it's so important that this is a part of having God's heart. God says, reap in mercy. You know, our tendency oftentimes as human beings, our nature is sometimes to be critical and to be judgmental. And yet the Bible says, reap in mercy. We need to represent the heart of God. And then I like what it says at the end. It says, until, till he comes and rains righteousness on you. No half-heartedness about this. No half-hearted devotion. We've got to go all out. In this, if we want to break up the fallow ground in our hearts, sow righteousness, reap mercy, seek God until He comes and rains righteousness. As that rain goes on that hardened ground, it begins to soften the heart that has gotten hard toward Him. And here's the thing as Christians, obviously, the Bible says that we are ambassadors for Christ. We're His ambassadors, so we represent Him. In any and every way in our lives, we represent Him. And you know what? It is not just enough simply to speak the truth. Is it important to speak the truth? Yes. It also says speak the truth in love. But it's not just important to speak the truth because, you know, you can speak the truth in such a way that doesn't represent God's heart. You can make the Bible say anything you want it to say. You understand that? Yeah. I mean, you know, the, you could find a verse... And sometimes we do this. And then a scary thought. I've got, I've got a, a, a grudge, or I've got this. I'm going to find a verse in the Bible that I can use on this person to justify or to try to, you know, actually represent my own feelings toward them when we're not representing the heart of God. That's a scary, scary place to be. I think you would understand. So maybe you're really ticked off at somebody. So you go through the Bible and you find every verse you can about wrath and judgment and God's, you know, going to execute, you know, his righteous anger or whatever. And you just quote verse after verse to somebody and, and that's not what God's saying. That's a serious, that's a serious matter. That you have misrepresented the heart of God to those around us. Nothing should make a, a chill go up our spine like the thought of misrepresenting the heart of God. When, uh, when David was confronted with his sin, in Psalm 51, it's the psalm of repentance. Verse 10, he said, Create in me a clean heart of God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. That God would give us a bold, sensitive, tender heart before him. Heart of clay, heart of flesh, and heart that is soft.